I know what you're thinking. It's day five of the Lightroom holiday graphic template week, and it's over. And you can't believe it's over. You're sad. I'm sad too. It'll never be back again. It probably will be back again. Um, enough with the drama. So, uh, so today I wanted to show you how to create. It's probably one of my favorite ones. How to create a calendar inside of Lightroom. Okay. And as most things, it starts. It starts off with a graphic because I don't want to create these graphics. So I go download them. Uh, Photolia.com, iStock.com, whatever website you use for for downloading stock photos. If you don't, then either one of these are great websites and they just cost a few dollars. Do a search for calendar. Okay. Now you'll come up with things like this, which you could use something like this. You could substitute this image for what we're going to do today and do an entire year on one page. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Or you could download an image like this and crop out each month, which I'll show you how to do in, in today's video, crop out each month and you'll still get plenty of resolution and you only have to pay for one image. Okay. Um, I actually, I went over to iStock and I downloaded this one right here, this January template. It requires a little bit of work. So that's why I did it just to show you what probably one of the hardest case scenarios is. And, and you could go from there. All right. So we open up the image inside of Photoshop. The first thing I want to do is I want to make this white. I want this to be all on a white piece, a uh, white piece of paper. I don't want it to be kind of off white like it is. So I'm going to press command or control L goes into levels. I'm going to grab my eyedropper here and all I'm going to do is click on something I want to be white. It'll set a white point. So click on it and it becomes white that easy. Click. Okay. The next part is optional. You could press command or control U to go into hue saturation and you could come over here and you could change the color. Okay, so if you download something that has color, not every image you download is going to have color, but if you downloaded something that has color, you could go in there and you could change it and you could kind of tweak it if you wanted to. Okay, so there's another thing for you. All right, and I always try to match the photo, like whatever month I'm going to do, try to kind of maybe match a photo to the color theme that happens to be on there. All right, so we'll click OK. Last thing is we just got to crop this. So I'm going to zoom in on the top corner. And I want to crop it right to the, the color of the border here. So I'm going to get my crop. All I do is use my space bar key. Once I drag the crop out, I use space bar uh, to move it. And then just take it down here to the other side. And once I get it into place, looks good. Press enter or return. Okay. So now I got the image on basically isolated by itself. At that point, file save. Save it as a JPEG. Just a regular JPEG. Save it on your desktop, wherever. Just a regular JPEG is fine. Okay, you're going to import it into Lightroom. In Wednesday's video, I talked about I talked about creating a folder to import these things into, so you have all of your graphics and templates and things like that all in one folder. So if you want to keep it organized, that'll help. Just import it into Lightroom. Remember, it's a JPEG, so Lightroom Lightroom will treat it as a JPEG. It's it's a photo basically to Lightroom. So once you get into Lightroom, you're going to go over to the print module. I'll go ahead and I'll clear this layout. You're going to go to the print module and choose custom package. Okay. And then you bring up your photos that you're going to work with. So, and, and this kind of hinges on you setting your page up. So don't forget, go to page setup first, choose the, the printer you're going to you're choose here, choose your paper size. So let's say I'm going to go 17 by 22 sheet borderless. Okay. So choose your paper size as well. Click. Okay. So now at least you know that you're working with the right layout and then just drag your calendar onto the screen. What I'll do with this, and I don't always do this, but with, with the calendar, I, I want to lock the aspect ratio because as I drag this, I don't want to cut off the month. I don't want to cut off any of the dates or anything like that. So I'll lock the aspect ratio and that way I know I'm not going to cut anything off. So I just put it right over here on the bottom. I'll turn that off and then I'll just drag a photo again. And I try to match the photo to, to the, the general overall color theme of the image. And I'll just drag that right up to the top. Okay. Now, if I if I try to drag it below, it obviously goes below the cal the calendar. If I if I wanted to kind of fit right in, you could see right there. There's there's a tiny little border between. You could always right click and choose send to back, and that way it becomes in back. And now I can drag it right below there if I want. Okay. So you kind of play around with some of the options there. But that's pretty much it. You got your calendar. You're ready to print. Um, you could come down here. You could you could print this to your printer. You could print it to a JPEG file and use it as a desktop, uh, a desktop pattern. I mean, the sky's the limit with something like this. 
You could also create a template from it. Come over here to your templates and then just call this calendar. You could create a template from it. And then let's say, you know, we're, we're back over here. We've done something else, totally different, clear layout. We're, we're not even anywhere near this. Come over here, create a template, go to your user templates and click on it. And it sets everything up for you. All you have to do is just drag the next month in and the next photo in. Okay. And so all the, the aspect ratio, everything of the template, the size and everything is still there for you. So you don't have to go sizing everything and getting it perfect all over again. Okay. So honestly, this is probably one of my favorites. Um, I think it's got a lot of uses again for, if you're printing, you want to put this onto the refrigerator, uh, you could use it for clients. You could set it as a desktop background. If you printed it out as a JPEG, the sky really is, is the limit with something like this. Okay. You could even, um, I, you know, and I kind of just thought of this. I don't, I don't know, really know how it's going to work. So we're, we're giving it a try here. Um, I'm going to, let's drag another photo out. Okay. And here, let's put this one. Let's put this one back. I was going to use that one. We won't, we'll use this photo. You could always come over here and you could probably resize a photo. Like if it was somebody's birthday and you could drop their photo in onto that day of the month and you'd have their little picture there and everything too. So just, I, I, I honestly just thought of that as I was closing this up. So I'll stop now. I hope you guys enjoyed this week. Lots of fun. I think it's cool to see some of the creative ideas in Lightroom where we think of it as just photography, but um, you can do some pretty creative things that I, I think people wouldn't think came out of Lightroom. And honestly, I think it's easier than doing it in Photoshop because you don't have to mess with layers and masks and all those different things. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed. We'll talk to you again soon.